Hi guys, this is GKCS. We are going to be talking about the second part of Computerical Game Theory now. And if you haven't seen the first part, you can check that out. A uh, quick recap of that is to find out the Grundy number for a given position, a game position, you need the maximum excludent of the set of all possible positions from that position. All right, and the reason why we wanted this was going to be very clear now. We have this theory called Sprague Grundy. Right, so I hope I get the spelling right, but yeah. These guys are two mathematicians who uh, actually formulated this theory. They say that using Grundy numbers, you can tell if a person is winning or losing a position. For impartial games, of course, but uh, you, you can do this using their theorem. So what that states is that you have the set of possible positions that you can go to. Positions. And you need to perform an operation on this, which gives you results. So, the operation is ZOR. This is binary ZOR. So, uh, if you just, uh, you know, ZOR is basically 1 and 1 gives you 0. Even number of 1s give you 0. And odd number of 1s give you 1. Right? A simple binary ZOR, you can look it up. But, if the ZOR of all the Grundy numbers that you can get from a set of all possible positions, is equal to zero. That means you're losing. All right. And if it is not zero, that means you're winning. So from any given position, if you take the ZOR or the set of possible positions from now, and if you get a zero, then you know that the player playing right now, the player who has that turn right now is losing and otherwise it is winning. So let's pick an example from last time to understand what's going on. Uh, we have six coins, yeah, six coins and from this pile of coins you can take out between one to three coins. Okay. So how do we play? Well, last time we learned that the Grundy numbers can be calculated using a recursive uh, function. So this time we have learned about Sprague Grundy, which says that the result of having six coins in your pile and with your turn, uh, it's the ZOR of Grundy six minus one. You can take one coin, so that would be five. The next scenario is when you take two coins, giving you Grundy 4. And the only remaining scenario is when you take away all three coins, as many as you can basically, and you have Grundy 3. So last time we discussed that uh, these three numbers, they evaluate to Zor of. Grundy of 5, remember, was 1. Grundy of 4 was 0. And Grundy of 3 was 3. Alright, what does this say? If you take the ZOR, binary ZOR of this, you have 0, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1. Numbers in binary, ZOR operation takes even number of 1s to give you 0, or odd number of 1s to give you 1. So even number of 1s, you have two 1s, which gives you 0. Single 1, which gives you 1. This in, uh, in decimal is equal to 2. So, you have the number 2 as a result. And you know what, if this is non-negative, then we just said that you're winning. So if you have 6 coins in your pile, and it's your turn, you're winning. That's a guarantee that Sprague Grundy gives you. Let's just draw a table to understand when we are winning and when we are losing. Right, so if we have a number of coins, goes like this, if you have 6, then you're winning. Let's try 5. If you have 5 coins, then you have Grundy of 4, 3 and 2 as the possible states that you can go to. Alright? And we have 4, 3, 2 
which gives you numbers of grandi of 2 was 2, grandi of 3 was 3, grandi of 4 was 0. So, zor of these three numbers is equal to 0, 3, and 2. So, we can change this number. So, that's 2, 0, and 3. That's a zor. Uh, this gives us 1 over here and even number of 1, so that's 0. So, this comes out to be 1. It's still not equal to 0. So, what we can say is we are winning in this position also. With 5 coins, you're still winning. Nice to know. Now, let's try 4 coins. And last time we discussed about why this makes sense. But having 4 coins and losing, why that makes sense. Because if you have 4 coins, you take away all 3, you're left with 1, and your opponent takes away that 1 to leave you with 0 coins. If you take away 2, then your opponent has 2 coins and they take away both to give you 0. And finally, if you take away just 1 coin, your opponent has 3 coins, they take away all 3 to leave you with 0 coins and you're losing. So this should give us 0, but let's understand if the theory is doing the same. Result of 4, oh, the big moment, the time to understand whether the mathematicians do stuff which makes sense or not. Uh, so, Zor of Grandi of 3, 2 and 1 are the possible states that we have. Grandi of 3 is 3, Grandi of 2 is 2 and Grandi of 1 is 1. So, Zor of 3, 2 and 1 is our answer. Zor of 3, Zor of 2 and Zor of 1. We change this to 1. 1 and 1, even. 0. 1 and 1, even again. Even number of 1s, that gives you 0. Doesn't matter whether it's binary or decimal, zeros always give you 0. Okay, uh, so you have a result 0. Which means that result of 4 is losing. That's what the theorem just said. And we just understood that this theorem makes logical sense. So, this is, this is what it states. If you have a position, you take the zor of all possible positions from that position, and if it evades to zero, you know that you're losing, otherwise you're winning. So this is a pretty uh, common concept in computer programming, where you are given two players who are playing optimally, uh, and what you need to find out is who is going to win the game at the end of the entire gameplay. So they don't ask you for the moves or for uh, how they're going to play, they just ask you who's going to win. However, you could understand what move to play also using these, uh, this uh, theory. And let's see how we can do that. The way you can play these games is by taking the game state that you have right now and looking at all possible states that you can go to. All right? And you take the result of those states to make your decision. What decision should you make? Well, if any one of these equates to zero, then you know that this position is losing. That's good, because you made your move, your opponent got a position in which the result equates to zero, which means they are losing in that position, and that in turn means that you are winning. Right, so if any one of these results, S of n let's say, equates to zero, you could choose this. You could choose this move. And what I mean by move is, from this state, let's say with six coins, if going to four coins is winning for you, then you choose that move. So you take out two coins, is what, what the optimal move would be. Right? Result of S is the zor of all possible positions that you can go from S. Right? Optimal moves are played this way. In case you need to show some sort of winning strategy or any, any sort of backtracking. Uh, yeah, this is how you do it. Alright, so now we can play our really good game of uh, NIM in which we have 4, 6, 8 and 2 coins on each pile. Alright, and the way we are going to play this game is go to a particular pile and perform a certain kind of operation. So the operation that I am talking about is division. Uh, so you can 
take the floor of division with these three numbers of 2, 3 and 6. So for example, uh, you can choose this pile and divide by 6 which is going to give you 1. So the number of coins in this pile will shrink to just 1. That's one move that you can play. All right. And using these moves you need to find out uh, at the end who is winning. So for that we need a table and this is what we are going to do. So the result of the initial position can be defined this way. Zor, as Prag Grundy says, of Grundy of 4, Grundy of 6, Grundy of 8, and Grundy of 2. So you take the Zor of these four numbers, if it's equal to 0, you're losing, too bad, otherwise you're winning. So uh, yeah, of course, we need the table, yeah, I forgot about it. So this is what we are going to have, we are going to be having uh, Yeah, the Grundy numbers will be this way And the results will be over here So Grundy of, let's take the simplest, Grundy of 2 Grundy of 2 is equal to, according to the formula G of any x is equal to uh, max minimum excluded of all possible states that can go from there. So from 2, if you divide by 2, you get 1. So max of 1 comma, if you divide by 3, you're taking the floor here, so you get 0. 0 divided by 6 is also going to give you 0. So max of 1, 0, 0. Mm, that is equal to 2. So Grundy of 2 is 2. You see that I uh, skipped a few steps. The, the fact would be that Grundy of 2 would be max of Grundy of 0, Grundy of 0 and Grundy of 1. So I took just 0, 0, 1 instead. This is the procedure. But Grundy of 0 is obviously 0 because you have no moves to make, so you're in a losing position. This is also zero. Grandy of one, you can move to only one position from one. If you divide by two, you get zero. If you divide by three, you get zero. If you divide by six, you get zero. So Grandy of one means that from one, you can go to zero. Max of that is equal to one. You have the single number, the next number is one. So yeah, we discussed this in the previous video. In case you're not sure, you could check that out. Max of 0, 0, 1 is 2, as we said. What about Grundy of uh, 4? Yeah, next easiest. Grundy of 4 is... Yeah, the possible states from 4 are G of 2, comma G of 1, comma G of... 0. So we divide them and then we take the max. G of 2 we said is, we just found out is 2. G of 1 is 1 and G of 0 is 0. So max of that, max of 2, 1, 0 is equal to, take your time, don't be in a hurry, make the guess, 3. Alright, uh, what about G of 6? G of 6 is max of divide by 6 you get 1, divide by 3 you get 2, divide by 2 you get 3. So this is of course G of 1, G of 2 and G of 3. G of 2 is 2, G of 1 is 1, G of 3 is interesting, we need to find that out first. G of 3. Max of. Divide by 6 and you get 0. Divide by 3 and you get 1. And divide by 2 and you get 1. So G of 0 is 0. G of 1 is 1. And uh, so max of that is equal to 2. 
nice to know because we are going to be using it here g of 1 is 1, g of 2 is 2, g of 3 is also 2 unfortunately we do not have a 0 here so max of these three numbers is equal to 0 ok 6 has uh, gravity of 6 is equal to 0 interesting uh, what's the very next number that we need? we need 8 so let's go there that in turn is equal to max of g of divided by 6 you get 1 g of divided by 3 you get 2 and g of divided by 2 you get 4 so max of these three numbers g of 1 1 g of 2 2 g of 4 is 3 so that's max of what is it again 1 2 and 3 again the smallest number which does not exist in the set is actually equal to 0 so tragically we have g of 8 equal to 0 what does that mean let's take our result Zor of these numbers so that equates to over here above Zor of g of 4 is 3 g of 6 is 0 boom g of 8 is also 0 these guys are not going to affect the result g of 2 is 2 so zor of these numbers is equal to 1 which is non zero and so you are winning this game all right if both players play optimally the person who's starting this game will win the game that's what we just learned using Sprague Grundy, uh, we take the result. Alright, now what does that say also about this entire game? Zor is equal to 1. Zor of these results is 1. What do you need to do to put your opponent in a losing position? You need to make the Zor of all possible positions from the, from the new position that you take equal to 0. So what would be the optimal move to play? Hmm. Well, we need to convert this to zero. We have two zeros here. If only this number became two, then zor of this would be zero. So this number, three. What's that? G of four is three? Yeah. So, G of four is three. We need to make this pile equal to two to get our optimal move. So, this file needs to be made into 2 to get our optimal move we have a value of 2 over here so if we can convert 4 to 2 then we are putting our opponent in a losing position alright that's, that's the best move to make 4 can be converted to 2 by dividing by 2 so our optimal move in this position is to take this file divided by 2 and get a new pile of size 2 so this is how you play impartial games usually you have some dynamic programming approach to find out what is the best move you know th this was a very manual way that you need to divide by 2 to get the winning position and uh, Coach Chef has this problem in the math challenge which uses Prague Grundy so I'm working on that and in case you're interested you could subscribe for that if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them below I'll be happy to help and I'll be sharing all relevant links and description uh, below. <laughs> so stay tuned, see you next time.